Hello and welcome to the CBT Nuggets Exam Pack 70-686, Professional, Windows 7 Enterprise Desktop Administrator. My name is Tim Warner and I'm happy and grateful to be your instructor for this series. The agenda for this introductory nugget is as follows. I'm first going to give you a high-level overview of this course to make sure that you're well-placed in it. I'm also going to review best practices for attacking this course to gain maximum value for your time and effort. After we cover the course in a general way, I'm then going to drill into Windows 7 client certifications. Obviously, you're after the 686 certification exam. However, I think it's useful for us to review how Microsoft organizes all of its Windows 7 exams into certifications. Finally, we'll look at tips and tricks specifically geared toward your success on the 70-686 exam. Let's get to work. Whenever I create a course for CBT Nuggets, the first thing I'm going to do is go out to the vendor's website and review what they have to say with regard to that certification exam. I hope it also goes without saying that I take and pass the exam myself so I'm coming from a standpoint of somebody who really does understand both the theory as well as the practice behind that skill set. To this end, what you're seeing is a run of 20 nuggets that comprise the course overall, and what you're going to find is a one-to-one -one mapping in between my nugget titles and the major points in Microsoft's published 70-686 preparation guide. If you're not already familiar with the Microsoft Learning homepage, please get familiar ASAP microsoft.com forward slash learning and you can look up the 70-686 page just to make sure that we're on the right track. I can assure you we are. After this first introductory nugget we're going to drill right in and look at client licensing and activation. After that we'll look at software updates and then I'm just not going to read every one of these as we go on. I'll just give you the high level overview. Basically the 686 skill set is all about Windows 7 deployment with a special emphasis on planning. Depending upon how large your shop is, maybe it's relatively small and you're responsible for deploying Windows 7 to only a dozen or two dozen machines. On the other hand, you may be in a shop that's ready to do a mass deployment of thousands of desktops. Regardless, we want to do everything we can to get the deployment right on the front end and on the first time. Therefore, there's a stronger focus on planning and architecture in the 70-686 exam than there was on its previous version. You may or may not have taken the 70-624 exam. The 624 exam dealt with Vista and Office 2007 deployment, and my CBT Nuggets colleague Rhonda Layfield did a very good job actually in presenting the 7624 material, so check out that CBT Nugget series if you're interested. Basically, you can see that the course skill set is divided into phases. As I said, we do licensing and activation, updating, then we get into planning, creating system images. We look at other specific deployment issues that folks are going to have. What are we going to do with security? This is especially important if, for instance, our client desktops are starting with Windows XP and we're migrating directly to Windows 7. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? User Account Control, or UAC. How, for instance, are your machines going to handle Windows Internet Explorer 8? Are you going to do a light touch strategy that requires a little bit of administrator intervention? Or is your shop going for a rationalized approach where we're using zero touch, completely automated operating system deployment? If you're doing a wipe and load scenario, well, you have user data that exists on the user's machine. Or even in a desktop replacement, of course, there's the question, what are you going to do with all of the user's preferences and settings? Therefore, we also have to take into account user state migration. Finally, we have the issue of application compatibility. You see there's the operating system stuff, there's the user setting stuff, there's the security and UAC material, and then finally there's the question of will our line of business applications that ran more or less just fine in our previous version of Windows going to run just as well in Windows 7. Therefore, we're going to spend quite a bit of time looking at the application compatibility tools given to us by Microsoft. Actually, if I were to define the 70-686 skill set, I would use deployment, planning, and then tools. 
If you've taken 70-624, quite frankly, you're at a big advantage here in approaching the 70-686. Microsoft has certainly revised many of the deployment tools, given them different names, given them additional features, but their basic core functionality remains largely unchanged. Of course, with any new iteration, operating system iteration, we have new deployment tools that weren't around in the 70-624 Vista deployment days. Regardless, whether you're coming to the 686 six new or already with experience with OS deployment in the new Microsoft world, you're going to come away from this training with a deep understanding of a lot of tools. It's pretty amazing the wide catalog of utilities, all of which are free, that Microsoft provides us IT pros to make deployment easier. Now, of course, there's the question, why does Microsoft give all this stuff away? Well, they want to make it as easy as possible for folks to deploy Windows, and ultimately, if we're going to deploy Windows, we're buying Windows licenses, you see? Capitalism at its best. About Microsoft desktop certifications. Now, depending upon how long you've been in the industry and how long you've been a Microsoft certified professional, we've seen a pretty good sized sea change in Microsoft's certification schema over the last handful of years or so. The way things used to be in the old scheme is that if you passed a single technology exam, you would earn the MCP title, Microsoft Certified Professional. Well, nowadays in the new scheme, and pretty much the new scheme took place, the change happened from the old XP Windows Server 2003 certifications to Vista Server 03 R2, and then now currently we have Windows 7 on the desktop and Server 08 R2 as the latest and greatest version of the server operating system. So whereas you could earn your MCP by passing a single technology exam in the XP 2003 world, nowadays if you pass a single technology exam for Vista, Windows Server 2008, or Windows 7, you become what's called a Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist, or MCTS. I think Microsoft's main point in shifting from the MCP to the MCTS for a baseline credential is that MCTS makes it a lot easier, frankly, for you to display your skill set to potential employers and clients. I mean, you could earn your MCP in a whole lot of technologies, and on your resume, you would just say MCP. Whereas with MCTS, especially one benefit you get of being an MCTS is being able to use the official Microsoft logoing. You could have a really nice looking MCTS title and then off to the side your skill sets, SharePoint, SQL Server, Windows Server 2008, etc. Now, what you're seeing in the middle of this whiteboard is a poll from Microsoft Learning website that shows the Windows Client Certification exams. Now, in this Nugget series, we're firmly focused on the second row. Down here, the MCITP Consumer Support Technician and Enterprise Support Technician and these associate exams that begin with 6.2 are Windows Vista, and we're not concerned with that. We're going to be referring to Vista a lot in this training, but it's assumed that we want the latest and the greatest, so we're really not concerned with these titles. What you may be wondering about is what is the deal with this MCITP business. In the old scheme of things, once you had your MCP, you then wanted to move up in the Microsoft certification world to earn a mid-tier and possibly a top-tier credential. And for IT pros, there were a few different mid-tiers. The one that's relevant for the desktop support world is called Microsoft Certified Desktop Support Technician, or MCDST. Really old. Probably a lot of those exams have retired by now. I'm just mentioning this for historical historical purposes, and the MCDST title dealt with Windows XP support and Microsoft Office 2003 deployment. Top tier in the old world for IT pros is, you know what I'm talking about, the MCSE, the much vaunted Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. As of Vista, and certainly now with Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 R2, the top tier credential name has changed. MCSE is, I guess as far as I'm concerned, a near deprecated title. Now we have the Microsoft Certified IT Professional, or MCITP. This is the premier credential that we have going forward, and it follows the theme of the Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist in as much as we can earn multiple MCITPs in granular areas of Microsoft products and technologies. Specifically, we have up here the MCITP Enterprise Desktop Support Technician 7 
and Enterprise Desktop Administrator 7. Now there's quite a bit of overlap actually in those skill sets. Just between Yumi and Lawal, I think Microsoft split these skill sets out to generate more revenue with testing. But that's not an official position, that's simply my hunch at having been in the industry for many years. You'll notice that the starter exam for either one of these titles is exam 70-680, and I presume you've probably knocked that one down already, and that's why you're studying the 686 material with me right now. 70-680 is your bread and butter Windows 7 configuration exam. If you want to do desktop support, 685 is just your traditional desktop troubleshooting exam. It follows really closely on the heels of 70-680. Enterprise Desktop Administrator, the administrator focus as opposed to the technician focus, means we have a little bit more architectural input. Therefore, Microsoft gives 686 as a requirement for this title. Can you earn one or both? Absolutely. Can you earn neither and just walk away from this Nugget series with skills? Sure, you can do that as well. It's up to you. Finally, let's have a look at the 70-686 exam specifically. What can you expect from this? The 686 exam is a traditional Microsoft computer-based exam in which you can expect approximately 54 multiple choice questions in approximately 160 minutes. In my view, Microsoft has always been pretty generous in their time allotments for their exams. You can especially contrast the Microsoft exams to the Cisco exams, where typically you're going to need every second to complete those successfully. The standard passing score for most Microsoft exams is 70% or 700 graded on a 1,000 point scale. You can expect, in all likelihood, standard multiple choice items. These are of two varieties, the single answer multiple choice, where of course just one possible choice is the correct one, and then there's the multiple answer multiple choice, where Microsoft is always kind enough to tell us in advance how many of those choices are correct. I don't know about you, but I just can't stand those items that are choose all that apply. They really infuriate me. Here you're going to see choose two, choose three, and actually the Prometric testing engine will not let you advance to the next question unless you've answered the appropriate number of choices. Finally, how do you register for one of these bad boys? Now I know I'm preaching to the choir for those of you who have already passed 680, and I apologize for that. However, for those of you who have not registered for a Microsoft exam yet, it's important that you understand how this works. Microsoft has chosen to partner exclusively with Prometric.com. If you've done other certification exams, you might have used the other contender in the IT certification exam registration space, and that's Pearson View, Virtual University Enterprises. Both of these are fairly equivalent in terms of, for instance, if you were to register for a CompTIA exam, CompTIA allows you to register with either registrar. You can expect the same questions, the same look and feel, the very same exams as a matter of fact. It's just a political reason that Microsoft has partnered with Prometric exclusively. The price of these exams is standardized $125 USD. That's per attempt. If you don't pass on your first attempt, you're going to have to buck up another $125. So, of course, it's best if you have an employer that's subsidizing you, but that's not always the case for sure. Now, something I always like to tell folks in industry, as well as my students, please do a Google search to see if Microsoft is still offering its second shot promotion. This has been a very successful deal for Microsoft, so it's almost always going on now. Just for grins, why don't we go out onto the web now and see if second shot is active as of this recording in May 2010. I performed a simple Google search for Microsoft Second Shot, and as you see, the first couple responses here are coming directly from Microsoft. The second response from Google mentions the Second Shot offer, so why don't we drill into that link and see what we can find. I'm now at a Microsoft.com learning subpage, and on their special offers page, it tells us here, the Second Shot offer provides you with a free retake if you do not pass a Microsoft certification exam on your first try. Now, they tend to put an expiration on these offers. However, in practice, they almost always have it running because, frankly, it makes good business sense for them. They're going to get more folks registering if they're offering the second shot offer than they would otherwise. This particular offer is going to expire June 30th, 2010. But I would encourage you, when you're watching this nugget, to get out on Google and see if Microsoft has activated the program again. Let me give you a quick capsule summary on how it works. The way second shot works is you need to notify the second shot folks at Microsoft 
buy. Well, here are the instructions right here. Register to acquire a second shot voucher for a retail exam. So you purchase your exam voucher by registering it as a second shot voucher. This notifies Microsoft in advance that you A, plan to take a particular 70 prefix. 70 prefix are the traditional Microsoft IT Pro exams and that you want to do the second shot promotion. Then it's just as easy as using Prometric.com to schedule the exam just like as if you paid cash for it. Well, actually...